Whether you love them, you hate them, or you want to date them, it's all gone to hell. Now with Arcane Season 1 and Season 2, I think we can all obviously say the very root of a lot of these problems is the broken relationships. And sadly enough, a lot of this shit has gone way too far where there's no mending the amount of damage that has been done. But that's not gonna stop us from exploring a few of the relationships in the show and trying to decipher where all hell broke loose. Personally, I'd like to start with Silco and Vander, the two dual kings of the Undercity. We're not shown directly too much about their past and how they got to the point they were at at the beginning of season one of Arcane, but through light flashbacks and pieces of dialogue between each other, we can at least tell they were way tighter and even formed a brotherhood than where they ended up by the beginning of season one. Their conversation when Vander is captured paints the picture for us a little bit, with Silco mentioning how they knew the top side wouldn't listen to anything else and together they were able to break free and start to build up the Undercity. The exact moment in which they diverged paths is not not shown but we can heavily infer that it started with Silco wanting to continue an even bloodier revolution continuing to build up the Undercity further while Vander elected that the best way to continue for the Undercity to grow is to form a symbiotic relationship with Topside. Basically like he was willing to bite a few more bullets in order to protect the peace and the people that he was starting to protect more and more. With flashbacks from Vi and Jinx's childhood as well as the conversation that Silco and Vander had, we can see that Vander was obviously in a more brutal mindset initially when it came to trying to build up the Undercity. And it almost drives me crazy to see that we didn't get like a deeper backstory into the relationship and how Silco and Vander got to this point. Their goals seem so similar, yet they diverge so heavily. For them to at one point be brothers definitely makes me question if they could have come to some resolution. Like what was the final point in which Vander was was like, I just have to drown this guy. Was it Silco electing to start working with Singe and adding him to his team? Or was it Vander who initiated the fight with Silco knowing that his former brother in arms would never change and was gonna go on an even deeper and darker path leading to the destruction of the lanes in the Undercity which they worked so hard to escape from the top side in order to protect these newfound people. Like between the rebellion and between where we ended up in season one, where does the drowning of Silco end up in all of that? And at what point does Vander become a changed man? To be honest, we genuinely need a prequel story between these two. They're easily one of the deepest relationships in all of Arcane. Two leaders that obviously wanted the best for a lot of people, but it could only result in them destroying each other because they couldn't agree on their differences in protecting people. Their broken relationship unfortunately directly results in Vi and Jinx's relationship going forward, so we're starting now with them. Two sisters completely torn apart in one of the most unfortunate circumstances ever and their relationship starts becoming quickly fragmented very early on and you can see glimpses of this on after the failed heist when Jinx starts to learn that Vi does not see her as reliable of a piece on the team as she may have believed before. Being the younger sibling or having someone you look up to all you want them to do slash know is that you are important to them and with Vander's capture and how serious this mission is along with powder fumbling a little bit by throwing their earned loot from the heist into the river after she was afraid she was gonna get beat up by the bullies that were chasing her down Vi had to make the tough decision as a leader to tell Jinx to sit this one out with Jinx being the younger sister she actually couldn't understand that decision she was way too young when she was involved in a lot of this and with her overhearing the conversation between Morlo and Jinx about how sometimes she does end up messing up because she gets too nervous as the younger sister a desperation to quickly prove herself strongly arose and with the result of vander's capture and eventual attempted escape ending in everybody basically just dying large amounts of grief frustration 
and trauma heavily shattered these sisters' relationship. A little bit of misunderstanding too, because obviously Vi didn't completely abandon Powder in that moment. She was just frustrated and traumatized by how bad everything just went. When she attempted to go back, obviously Marcus just grabbed her and threw her in jail. And honestly, that's one of the most frustrating things about Arcane is that due to the hectic situation that they are all in, Jinx and Vi have not been allowed to have that conversation. That moment happened so quick for everybody that Jinx was heavily stunted mentally from how quick everything went down and the immediate arrival of Silco as her new protector. Vi never got a chance to go back for her sister. And as years pass and time continues to go on, more situations happen that make coming to an understanding of this moment so much harder to get to. If you made it this far in the video, then one, you have to sub to Time Pizza and help us take over the whole anime cartoon internet game. Two, you have to follow the Twitch because I know you're going to be bored after this and I'm live streaming every single day on Twitch. You just got to go over there and follow us. So stop wasting time, follow the pizza people, join the We Move initiative and be a pizza person and help us take over the whole game. We move. One of those new situations that's resulted in all of this is the one between Kaylin and Vi. Their relationship is initially formed out of Kaylin's want to involve herself in this case of tracking down Jinx, but it quickly becomes a hundred times deeper when the situation results in Jinx blowing up the council room, killing Kaylin's mother, and making it hella deep. And Vi, despite all of this, agreeing that Jinx has taken it way too far, still believing somewhere deep down that she wants to save her sister. Like Jinx and Kaylin's relationship damn near becomes a trauma bond because initially at first it was something natural and flirtatious with them both just agreeing on a common goal that Jinx needs to be stopped. But for Kaylin's side of things it quickly became a murder mission with it being wrapped up under the guise of her just doing her duty. And while Vi verbally agreed that that's what needs to happen, she mentally felt completely different. And this quickly results in the fragmentation of Kaylin and Vi's relationship because they were never on the same page to begin with. You can always have a crush on somebody, but family will always be family despite romantic intentions. And with the wound being cut so deep for each of them, there was never a chance in the world that this would ever result in something like this being more for Kaylin and Vi because the situations continue to pile on top of each other and the pain from all of these situations they just continue to grow and grow as we continue to get time skips though this shit will continue to run deeper and deeper and deeper and a few other relationships like victor and jace silco and jinx that i definitely like to explore further especially when all of arcane season two has completed who knows what other fragmented relationships that we will see when act three comes out but just let me know if y'all are interested in seeing me discuss those with y'all i'd gladly start cooking them up like and subscribe if you enjoyed I'm gonna cover plenty more animated series. My name is Time Pizza, and I will see you, pizza people, on the other side of the slice. Peace.